Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjaleyamal Mahalangam Engineering College, Koyal Vidni. I am happy to meet you again in the solution and discussion on UPSC Engineering Series exam questions in Mechanical Engineering. This is lecture number 31 and the topic is steam turbine. So, we take uh, questions from the steam turbine and we discuss the answers. The first question from 2019 question paper. A turbine in which steam expands both in the nozzle as well as in blade is called as there are four options given impulse reaction turbine, reciprocating steam engine, gas turbine, Curtis turbine. The correct answer is impulse reaction turbine. So, in the reaction turbine, the steam expands, the pressure decreases both in the nozzle and the rotor blade. In the impulse turbine, the steam expands, the pressure drop takes place only in the nozzle. So, Curtis turbine is the example for impulse turbine, but uh, the answer to this question is impulse reaction turbine. Next question from 2021 question paper, consider the following statements for the steam turbines. The ratio of axial enthalpy drop to the isentropic enthalpy drop is known as mechanical efficiency. That is wrong. The ratio of enthalpy drop in moving blade to the enthalpy drop in the stage is known as degree of reaction. This is correct. Reactive turbine is the example for reaction turbine. That is also wrong. Reactive turbine is a um, pressure compounded turbine. Curtis turbine is the example for impulse turbine. So, which of the above statements are correct? So, statement number 2 and 4, they are correct. So, option A, statement number 2 and 4, they are correct. The next question from 2020 question paper, which of the following are applied ways of compounding the steam turbine? Pressure compounding, temperature compounding, velocity compounding. So, there is no temperature compounding. This is either the pressure compounding or a velocity compounding. The answer is option C, 1 and 3. There is pressure compounding and velocity compounding. The next question from 2014 question paper, which of the following statements are correct? Velocity compounded impulse turbine gives less speed and less efficiency. For an ideal centrifugal compressor, the pressure produced depends on the impeller velocity and the diameter. While flowing through the rotor blade in a gas turbine, the relative velocity of the gas continuously decreases. While flowing through the rotor blade in axial flow compressor, the relative velocity of the air continuously decreases. Which of the four statements are correct? Statement number 1 and 4, they are correct. Velocity common impulse turbine gives less speed and lesser efficiency and the while flowing through the rotor blade in an axial flow compressor, the relative velocity of the air continuously decreases. Next, next question from 2019 question paper, consider the following statements regarding compounding, of steam, uh, compounding in the steam turbine. In the impulse turbine, steam pressure remains constant between the ends of the moving blade. So, the statement is correct. Across the rotor, there is no change in the pressure for the impulse turbine. In reaction turbine, steam pressure drops in the from the inlet to the outlet of the turbine. So, this is also correct. Velocity compounding, fastly expansion takes place in the steam place nozzle and further expansion takes place in the rotor blade. Statement number 3 is not correct. Velocity compounded turbine is an impulse turbine where the pressure drop takes place only in the nozzle. So, statement number 1 and 2, they are correct. Option A, statement number 1 and 2, they are correct. Next question from 2014 question paper, statement 1, modern turbine have velocity compounding at the initial stages and pressure compounding in the sub subsequent stages. That is correct. Statement number 2, ex excessive tip leakage occurs in the high pressure region of the reaction turbine, reaction blading. That is also correct. So, both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. So, 1 and 2, they are individually true. The next question, again from 2014 question paper, statement 1. In impulse turbine, pressure change occurs only in the nozzle of the turbine machine. The pressure of the liquid does not change while flowing through the rotor blade. The statement is correct. Statement number 2, the pressure of the liquid changes while it flows through the rotor in a machine in the reaction turbine. So, this is also correct. In the uh, reaction turbine, reaction turbine, pressure drop takes place across the rotor. So, now statement 1 and 2, they are individually true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of the statement 1. So, this is option B is the correct answer here. The next question from 2015 question paper, consider the following statements with regards to steam turbine. A single stage impulse turbine has a nozzle angle alpha. The maximum blade efficiency of the turbine will be cos square alpha. For reaction steam turbine with the identical stator and the rotor blade, the blade velocity is maximum 
blade velocity for maximum uh, the blade velocity for maximum blade efficiency equal to the inlet steam velocity velocity compared to impulse turbine impulse steam turbine gives less speed and lesser efficiency so statement 1 and 3 they are correct so statement 1 is single stage impulse turbine nozzle angle is alpha and the maximum blade efficiency is cos square alpha that is correct velocity compared to impulse turbine will give the lesser efficiency lesser speed that is also correct next question 2015 question paper the optimum ratio of blade speed to the tangential component of the jet speed so blade speed is vb and tangential component is vw1 of the d level and partial turbines are one for both one by two for d level turbine and one for the partial turbine one for the d level turbine one by two for the partial turbine one by two for both the correct answer is one by two for the d level turbine and one for the partial turbine so we will see how in the next slide Optimum blade speed ratio for D level turbine sigma equal to VB by V1 which is cos alpha by 2. So this is the inlet velocity triangle. Now we calculate cos alpha equal to VW1 by V1. So adjacent side by hypotenuse. So VW1 by V1. So comparing these two equations VB by V1 equal to cos alpha by 2. Substituting for cos alpha it is 1 by 2 VW1 by V1. So taking the first term and the third term. So, we will rearrange VB by VW1 equal to 1 by 2 for the D level impulse turbine. Then again, optimum blade speed for partial turbine is VB sigma equal to VB by V1 which is equal to cos alpha for the reaction turbine that is partial turbine. Now, once again, the again the velocity triangle referring to the velocity triangle here cos alpha equal to VW1 by V1. So, comparing the uh, first and the last uh, actually uh, VB by V1 and VW by V1 VB by VW1 equal to 1. So, for impulse turbine VB by VW1 equal to 1 by 2. For reaction turbine VB by VW1 equal to 1. That is the answer to the question. The next question from 2016 question paper. A, a steam turbine in which part of the steam after expansion is used for process heating and the remaining steam is further expanded for the power generation is called as pass out turbine. So, pass out turbine when the heating of the steam flows are less than the required at the factory pass out turbines are used in that case where a certain amount of steam is continuously extracted from the steam turbine for intermediate stages for heating purpose as at the desired temperature and the pressure and then and the remaining steam is further expanded for the power generation that is the pass out turbine option 2 option b 2 statement 2 is the correct answer next question from 2014 question paper in a half degree partial reaction turbine operating a design condition, the enthalpy drop of the steam in one stage of this uh, uh, turbine occurs. So, in the reaction turbine, partial reaction, 50 percent reaction turbine, half pressure drop 50 percent in the fixer blade and remaining 50 percent in the moving blade. So, 50 percent pressure drop in the fixer blade and remaining 50 percent pressure drop in the moving blade. That is what the partial reaction turbine. So, this is the answer. Option C is the answer here. Next question from 2019 question paper. Which one of the following statement is correct with respect to axial flow 50 percent reaction turbine? The combined velocity triangle is symmetrical. The outlet absolute velocity should not be should not be axial for the maximum utilization. Angle for angle of both the stator and the rotor are identical. For maximum utilization V, v u by v1 equal to sin square alpha. So, the option 1 is the correct answer. Combined velocity triangle is symmetrical. The next question from 2019 question paper. Consider the following statement regarding reaction turbine. Blades of, blade shape is aerophile type and its manufacture is difficult. It is suitable for small power. Leakage loss, leak loss are less in compared with the frictional losses. So, the correct option is statement 1. So, uh, regarding reaction turbine, blade shape is rare foil type and its manufacture is difficult. That is the only correct statement. Other two statements are not correct. Next question. The steam turbine can be governed by the following method. Except, except the reaction governing, throttle governing, nozzle control governing, combination of throttle nozzle control governing. So, the, which, the statement which is not the governing method is reaction governing. There is no reaction governing in the steam turbine governing methods. Next question from 2019 question paper. In a steam turbine, the nozzle angle at the inlet is 18 degree. The relative velocity is reduced to the extent of 6 percent when the steam flows over the moving blade. 
The output of the turbine is 120 kJ per kg of the steam. If the blades are equiangular, the speed ratio and the absolute velocity of the steam at the inlet for maximum utilization are. We have four options. The correct answer is 0 0.48 and 551.1 meters per second. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, the value is given alpha equal to 18 degree, k equal to vr2 by vr2 equal to 0 0.94. Power equal to 120 kilojoules per kilogram, Z equal to 1 for angular blade, equal angular blade. Sigma is VB, VB by VW1, cos alpha by 2, which is cos 18 divided by 2 equal to 0 0.4755. So, from the, for maximum utilization, power equal to VB into V1 cos alpha minus VB into 1 plus KZ. So, VB equal to V1, V1 cos alpha by 2, V1 cos alpha minus V1 cos alpha by 2 into 1.94. So, the K equal to 0 0.94, is that equal to 1, 1.94. So, 120 into 10 power 3, V1 square into cos alpha by 2 into cos 18 minus cos 18 divided by 2 into 1.94. So, calculating V1 equal to 523 meters per second. So, the sigma value is 0 0.4755, that is 0 0.48 and the V1 absolute velocity is 523. So, these are all the two answers for the question. The next question from 19 question paper, a steam turbine is supplied with the steam at a pressure of 20 bar kg. After expansion of the steam turbine, the steam passes to the condenser which is maintained at 250 millimeter of mercury by means of a pump. The pressure at the inlet and the exhaust of the steam turbine, so this, is, this answer is 2101 kilopascal and 68 kilopascal. So, the inlet pressure to the turbine is 2101 kilopascal and the exit pressure is 68 kilopascal. We will see how in the next slide. So, the atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kilopascal, absolute pressure the inlet, gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure 2000, that is 20 bar equal to 2000 kilopascal plus 101.325 equal to 2101.325 kilopascal and the exit pressure is 250 millimeter of mercury, 760 minus 250 equal to 500 millimeter of mercury which is equal to uh, rho g h 13.6 into 9.81 into 0 0.51 equal to 68 kilopascal. The inlet pressure is 2101 kilopascal and the exit pressure is 68 kilopascal. These are all the answers to the question. The next question, for the total power developed in the three stage elastic compound impulse service is 900 kilowatt. The power of magnitude of the first and second stages are, so the answer is, for multi-stage impulse turbine, the ratio of work produced in two, if it is two stage elastic compounder, 3 is to 1, 3 stage elastic compounder, 5 is to 3 is to 1, and 4 stage elastic compounder, 7 is to 5 is to 3 is to 1. So, this is 3 stage elastic compounder, power produces 90, 900 kilowatts. So, the first stage produces 500 kilowatts, and the second stage produces 300 kilowatts. The next question from 2019 question paper. In a steam turbine with the steam flow rate is 1 kg per second, inlet velocity of the steam is 100 meters per second, exit velocity of the steam is 150 meters per second, enthalpy at the inlet is 2900 kJ per kilogram and enthalpy at the outlet is 1600 kilogram, kilojoules per kilogram. The power av available from the turbine will be nearly. So, we have four options. The correct answer is 1293.8 kW. So, we will see how in the next slide. It is mere application of steady flow energy equation. So, M equal to 1 kilogram per second, V equal V1 equal to 100 meters per second, V2 equal to 150 meters per second, H1 equal to 900 kilojoules per kilogram, H2 equal to 1600 kilojoules per kilogram. So, steady flow energy equation, the general steady flow energy equation and the for turbine 1 by 2 V1 square plus H1 equal to 1 by 2 V2 square plus H2 plus W. So, substituting 1 by 2 100 square into 2910 power 3 equal to 1 by 2 1500, 150 square plus 1610 power 3 plus W. So, rearranging W equal to 1293.75 kilowatt. That is the answer to the question. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I have written mechanical engineering and I upload the video lectures of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. You subscribe the channel and use the video lectures for your better preparation. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. You can contact me for any clarification of the subject. We will meet again in another video lecture for the solution in the UPSC exam questions. Until then, bye.